Hi, I'm Juliet Wolf Robin, National Executive Director of American Photographic Artists. And we're here today virtually at Palm Springs Photo Festival. Um, we're glad you're here. Uh, American Photographic Artists is an association of professional photographers, mainly people who work in advertising, editorial. Um, we also have street photographers, photojournalists, fine artists. Um, really, we're looking at uh, bringing together photographers who really care about the industry, who are trying to connect with other photographers, with people who can hire them, who are trying to get information for um, on how to protect their work or how to market their work. And so we welcome you, if you're interested in photography, if you're a professional photographer, to join our association. We have today, um, and if you're at Palm Springs Photo Festival this week, you've probably noticed a lot of the people teaching the workshops are APA members, so that's really something we're very proud of. Um, today we are, we have three photographers who are on the board of APA in their respective chapters. So Mark Hill is in Atlanta and Gary Allard is in San Diego and Brooke Hummer is in Chicago. They're on um, the boards of APA. We have a national board, we have uh, local boards and they mm -hmm. are all professional photographers. Um, and we welcome them here today and we're going to talk a little bit about um, what they wish they they learned um, sooner, the information that that would help have helped them in their career if they had known it earlier, and they're going to share some of their knowledge with you. So um, why don't we start with Gary Allard, if you want to maybe uh, tell, talk a little bit about the kind of work you do, then we'll sh look at it and then you can answer some questions. Thank you. Uh, so I'm here in San Diego. I do uh, lifestyle work, advertising, editorial, um, primarily people. And um, I like to do uh, a lot of action, uh, fitness, sport kind of stuff. Movement um, is, is something that I'm really attracted to. And uh, also portraiture. Um, I've, I've, uh, that's kind of come, come up more recently to do a lot more portraiture. Uh, than, than I was doing before. And I've, I've really kind of come into that and, and enjoy it. Um, I'll show a little bit of the work I do here. I can share my screen. So. This here. Okay. All right. Uh, so some some underwater work, which is has also a kind of a new thing for me. I've I've, I've really been enjoying lately. Uh, I'm a uh, been a certified scuba diver since I was 14, and it just kind of seemed like a natural thing all of a sudden, and it clicked, and I. So I picked up a housing and started playing with uh, some underwater stuff and it's been really fun and interesting. Some lifestyle work, eyewear brand. Some running, I do a lot of, uh, a lot of running and, and uh, shoe brands. This is for ASICs, uh, ASICs running. Uh, for some in-store graphics for the Sports Authority. Uh, portraiture, this was um, kind of a fun project. I just worked with, with uh, this friend of mine and we came up with a bunch of really odd scenarios and uh, just kind of spent an, an, an afternoon shooting a bunch of stuff. Uh, some magazine work, editorial work, and some uh, Dance photography, which is another personal project that really um, I, I felt was very rewarding. I was working with a with a dance cr crew, dance troupe, and uh, we I shot with them for almost a year, and um, kind of really really enjoyed uh, where where it took took some of the work I did. Um, got to work with some amazing dancers. Again, action, movement, uh, a lot of that. And then some studio portraiture stuff uh, here with um, working for San Diego County and dogs. 
this was part of the, the project. He was the, the champion morale director. So, so that's a little bit of the work I do. Great. Um, okay, so can you tell us a little bit, is, that, is, is the work coming locally or is it uh, nationally? Um, it's, it's both. Um, the, some of the work I've, I've gotten that's, um, that's been national work are from agencies locally here for um, brands that are national brands uh, or um, vice versa too. We have local brands and working with other agencies that are not local. Um, I've done a bit of work for Qualcomm, which is a, a big company in San Diego. Obviously, they're, they've got um, a lot of pull here. So um, some of the work I've done for them has been very interesting. Um, a lot of it I have, uh, I, I don't show because it is, it, it, it's fallen into some, some oddball categories that I haven't, um, haven't actually, you know, said that I do the work in. <laughs> Um, which is one of the jobs I was I would like to talk about today. Um, I don't know if we, we want to talk about yeah, it yet. Go ahead and tell tell um, us something. It's uh, it was kind of funny because it, it, I think it was about a year and a half, two, probably two years ago, and uh, I got this um, request from an agency to bid on this job. They outlined what it was about. It was for Qualcomm. It was uh, going to be a museum or a, a hall of fame photo that was that was going to be a 10 foot by 15 foot final image that was going on display in the national inventors hall of fame in washington dc so i um was interested in what that was going to entail um so essentially what it was is is qualcomm has a bunch of patents on a, on a bunch of dif different pieces of technology what they wanted to do was show a city street and have people interacting with those pieces of, of uh, technology within this one giant photo. And they sent me the comps and they were um, just hand drawn, of course, and, and, uh, and mocked up. And I couldn't quite get my head around how it was gonna happen. Um, to make a 10 foot by 15 foot photo that you could walk up to in a museum and look at it and have it, you know, have it read um, properly. And so it involved a lot of things um, that quite, you know, scared the hell out of me. <laughs> a lot of things like I've, I've uh, you know, I'm not, I wasn't using large format cameras or medium format cameras. Um, I had to figure out how I was going to capture the, the digital files of this building. I had to scout for the building. I wanted to be able to scout for the building to use, um, which uh, took a lot of time and, and energy. Uh, then once we found the building, I had to make sure that it was okay to shoot at that space. We had to shut down the street, shut down the sidewalk, let all the, all the tenants in the building know that we were going to be shooting the building that day. Um, we got a four hour window to do it in, um, technical specs. I, I had to uh, rent a system with a tilt shift lens so I could take sections of the image and then we stitched them together and then, uh, to keep, to keep the high resolution there. So we basically took three sections of this building in a tilt shift lens, which I had never used before. I've never used a tilt shift system or a medium format system. Uh, so, and we, we tethered it to, I had a, a, a um, my, my digital tech came out and set up his little tent and he was, he was basically stripping in these comps in Photoshop as we were shooting the, the, the back plates and um, had the client there looking over his shoulder to make sure we got the thumbs up on everything. And then we went back and had to shoot the same spaces with the people interacting with the technology. So it was a guy on his phone waiting for an Uber because Qualcomm has made this technology um, from Uber um, and uh, other healthcare technology. So there's a little doctor's office with a woman playing doctor in there with an iPad. And, and so there was all these little things happening. There was a drone in the shot. that was a drone with a fireman <laughs> operating a drone. So it was like, in my opinion, a really crazy, not 
great photo in the end because it was just so unrealistic with, with what was going on. But there were real people and there were real things happening within this space. And then I, I shipped all the all the uh, frames off to my um, my retoucher and, and she put, I think it took like something crazy, like 60 different frames to make this one image. Um, but my my point on that was that all of these things that were thrown at me, I, I just like froze for a little bit. And then I realized, well, I know people that can help me with this. Um, I have a great producer and uh, I have a great retoucher. I have tech, uh, a, a digital tech, all these people, really great, a, a couple of great assistants. So you reach out to them, of course, um, and take things in small bites. Like I, I didn't, I didn't know how to start. I, you're just frozen. Like there's so many things going on, so many moving parts, and they had they wanted to do it in a very quick quick amount of time too. So um, you just take small bites of things. And as soon as I I was able to hand off the permitting process to the producer, that was handled. I didn't have to think about it anymore. Um, producer handled the um, the how we're going to shut the street down, and then we had to hire the San Diego police officers for four hours to to work the street to make sure that we you know the traffic control and that kind of thing i didn't know how to do that either so but all those little things and by the way the client <laughs> client the agency didn't actually know how to produce anything um and i because i start i started with that i said are you guys going to produce this and they said yeah we, we can handle it and then i started talking about the permits pulling the permits with the city and pulling the permits to do uh, shut down the parking and they were like oh we just we were thinking that maybe we could just get a window of time when the you know there was no and i'm like okay <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's but, educating them and getting it done yes yeah so it was um and and from uh, I've, from the beginning i've always liked the idea of producing my own shoots and um having the producer uh on hand to to help with when it's when it's left up to the client or the agency and sometimes you know they're not they're not checking all the boxes that i would like to check um so that's that's one of the big things that i've always stuck with if there's room for a producer at any level um that that i can um you know put into the process then i i always try to do that um, because it's it just makes me feel much better and i can concentrate on the, the things that i know how to do is take photos I, mm -hmm. you know, that's all I need to know how to do. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's new technology coming in and, and learning about that. Yeah, um, absolutely. Okay, uh, Brooke, maybe we can look at some of what you have and uh, switch it over. So, Great. okay, can I share my screen? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to share my screen here. Hopefully, we can. Okay. Um, so, I am a. Uh, lifestyle photographer and i specialize with in, uh, shooting kids and families and um i enjoy just trying to put people at ease and my specialty is definitely just kind of keeping keeping things friendly on set and everybody you know loose and free so um it's uh some of this <clears throat> uh most of this work is assignment work uh there's a few things in here that i did on my own. I mostly work on location, but I do have studio in Chicago. I think I'm repeating now. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing and just um, talk a little bit about the question that you asked us in the beginning, which um, I think is a dovetail off of Gary's um, comments. I would say that when the question that you asked was, what do I wish I had known, like when I was kind of busting into the commercial, um, Hold on a second. Oh, when I was busting into the commercial world, you know, trying to expand out of like the um, personal assignments and um, editorial stuff. Um, when I started in the advertising industry, I, I wish that I had not been afraid of the things that I didn't know. Um, I, I think that um, in the beginning, a lot of people had this attitude, um, recommended this attitude of like, fake it till you make it. And I don't believe in that. I think you go into, you have your um, talents and you go into every job, like honestly. And the biggest thing that I learned was um, 
was uh, my was team. It was about relationships. And when I say relationships, I don't necessarily I don't mean relationships with clients. Obviously, we all know you got to get schmooze. You got to go out and like meet all the um, and uh, meet the clients and go to all the agencies and everything. But I'm talking about the crew and the um, people that I work with are um, are the most important part of a. Uh, of any job um, that I've ever done. And especially the producer, you always want to have a good relationship with your producer and you want to, and you want to work with a producer who um, really respect, respects the crew. And um, so I would say that um, uh, you, you also like, uh, you just, um, I, I, okay, so I had one story that I wanted to tell, which was like one of my first like big agency jobs. Um, I, um, I, I, you know, I had a meeting with the crew and everything and the clients were there and my producer had to pull me away because as everybody was like working and kind of doing what they were doing, like I was out there with the assistants, like setting up and everything. And my producer came over to me and she was like, Brooke, like, no, that's not your job. Like you have to go and schmooze with the clients. And I was like, but it was just my instinct was to be working with my people, you know, and she was right, you know, and I needed to do that. But I also just, um, I've never given that up. I've always identified with like the work that the people are doing. I give them credit. I, I, I respect them. I make sure that everybody knows. And one of the things that was so interesting is that it's cool to be on a job and you're the boss and you're the one who's like, everybody's like, you know, turning to you and that feels really good. But on the other hand, what is really reassuring, and again, I think Gary was kind of speaking to this when he was talking about that job that he did, and he was like kind of scared of all the elements, is that when you're actually in a big, huge production, like everybody is important. You are important and you feel important because your name is like on all the, you know, stuff, but it's like your job is what your job is. Everybody is doing what they do and, if you have a good team and a good crew, then you're going to have a successful outcome. And also everybody's going to feel good. So like, maybe what you learned sooner was to have a good, good crew. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that was it. That was the thing that I always would like everybody to know is that if you're scared, like if you, if you go towards a job and you're scared of like, Oh my God, I don't know how to do all this. You find the people that know how to do it, you know, and you help and that, that help that, that are there for you that, that, that are, um, you know, especially, um, you know, there's a lot of technology that I'm never going to learn at this point, but I hire good people who know how to do things and, you know, and I try to keep up and learn, but mostly it's just really fun when you work with people that are really the best at what they do. Yeah. makes a difference. Yeah. And just to give credit where, you know, no, don't like to hire all the good people to do stuff and then act like you invented the whole show. <laughs> yeah. Give credit where credit is due. It's <laughs> good advice. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Mark, can we look at some of your work? Absolutely. Uh, I'm Mark Hill. I'm a um, internet entertainment and still and um, TV photographer based out of Atlanta. Um, and so I spend a vast majority of my time uh, working alongside video cameras. Um, and that's really become what my niche is, is I, I show up uh, on, on a television show or a, a TV commercial and I help people, um, you know, get the, the, the proper assets that they need to either make a TV show or to promote a show or to, um, to uh, promote a, a, a product. So there's a lot of times where I, I shoot uh, on commercials for Home Depot or Delta or um, whatever it might be. Uh, and as long as I am this, I'm usually the fourth camera on set. Um, so this stuff right here I'm showing right now is from uh, HBO's Watchmen, which was a project I did um, uh, two years ago, which got a, a ton of press and won tons of awards. And it was a ton, it was an absolute blast to work on it. Uh, these people were all amazing. Uh, Are you shooting, so while they're filming? Yes, like this shot here is while all the cameras are rolling. So I, I have to work with perfectly silent camera equipment 
and I have to know where B so that I'm not hit by the crane or the boom op or, you know, do something that would compromise the show. So this is this is a very typical um, two camera setup. There, uh, the show I'm on right now is a three camera setup. So you you know you just kind of have to find a spot and um, and make it work, um, and it's not always very easy. And is there uh, something in particular in doing this line of work that would have helped you if you knew when you first started doing this? Um, well, I mean, I think that the, 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 the most important thing is that you, no matter how good you are, everything's going to change. And I put this picture up because, I mean, I also do portrait photography for all kinds of people. Uh, and because I, I, I work with celebrities all the time, I get, I end up shooting a lot of celebrity portraits. Uh, and when we were shooting, um, we shot Ben Affleck for Parade Magazine and we rented a, um, a high school gymnasium down in uh, New Orleans and we, we needed three setups. We needed two cover variations and an interior spread variation. And so, um, this was one of the shots. This was, that's me standing in for Ben Affleck because I wouldn't like it. Uh, and so I thought this was a pretty strong cover picture and the, and Parade loved it. And Ben's people arrived 10 minutes before Ben did and killed this picture. They're like, he was promoting this basketball movie and they're like, we absolutely cannot have Ben touch a basketball. So we, we sort of started to scramble and run around and try to figure out, we had to build a new picture in the, in the 20 minutes that we had for Ben to arrive and Ben to put on his sweater and then come out and do these pictures because we had an hour with him. So um, my feeling was is that it was a stupid request that Ben couldn't touch a basketball. And so we put basketballs everywhere. There, there were basketballs near his feet, just outside of frame, everywhere that there's a place we could put a basketball, we did. So we shot this picture uh, and then we shot this picture uh, and this ended up being the cover picture. And there was literally four basket basketballs right around where he was going to sit down. And we knew that if he sat there, he would grab a basketball. <laughs> uh, and he did. And I was pretty happy with that picture. So the, um, the lesson of the day was, is that no matter how good you are, no matter how hard you work at your craft, everything's going to change. And you just need to be able to roll with it and be okay with it. Uh, because if you're not, if for some reason you uh, you the the change and the stress of the change makes you freeze, you'll never be able to recover from it, uh, and you won't and you won't be able to make your best work. So, just expect that it's all going to all your great ideas going to be thrown out the window. Great. So um, let me bring you all in so um, together and and discuss this a little bit. Um, uh, is there any way that any any other items that you find that when you're on set that you always have with you um, that you uh, didn't always ha bring with you that you realize is, is has made a difference um, in certain circumstances to have with you on set? I mean, I always bring something to eat. Honestly, I bring an apple and a power bar because I never know if I'm gonna have a second to break to, to get some food in me. And if I'm hungry or if I feel like my sugar's down or something, I find that if I can pop a power bar in me, I, I can, can recover faster. It's good. Something that not everybody would think about as being a, a key item. I think there's, um, there's a lot to be said for, for um, redundancy in your gear. Um, I know it's it, it's it's tough when if you're just starting out and you know you, you can only afford one kit or one body um, for your for your kit. But um, if if anything is going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong on set on the day you're going to shoot. I've had I've had um, 
about a lens that was doing some wonky stuff before, you know, the zoom wasn't catching, it wasn't grabbing, the, the autofocus wasn't grabbing. And, um, I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. And I, you know, I, I got my little blower out and I like cleaned things up best I could and, and, you know, tried to get the contacts cleaned up and it was working pretty well. And then um, a couple of days later when I'm shooting on location with live action runners and I have to have that super, 3D focus point that's going to follow them wherever they go, you know. So I'm I'm shooting, you know, nine frames a second on a on a um, sports camera, and 12 frames a second, and that there's my 70 to 200 millimeter lens doesn't want to grab the focus point, <laughs> banging it around, and it's the only one I have. It's the only one I brought. Um, so in those cases, you know, like if if there's if there's any doubt that that you might run into some issue like that I mean, you will on on set at the very wrong moment so um, rent some yeah. gear just put yeah rent rent gear if you have to I, good, and I've, I've done that plenty good of times insurance good um, insurance yeah, of course Brooke, you're dealing with children all the time that's most unpredictable <laughs> um is there something that you do that prepares you for a change in their mood or something that happens mm, you're on mute you can um, I'd say that I go into every shoot and again to to riff off of what our my two colleagues have just said it's like you go into every shoot knowing that if it can go wrong it will go wrong and so whether it's and you don't want the equipment like that's one thing that you can definitely anticipate so you for sure want to have all that backup equipment everything that you think you need you should have like double it and um and the same thing with and with working with kids i mean i have my own tricks that i've developed over the years um it's really and a lot of that just takes for me anyway it's just it's from years of practice like i've had to learn through the years that you know certain jokes like are or certain ways of, of treating one age child could actually make another age child like cry you know so you have to like know who like you have to know kids you can't and again like i've also worked on sets where you have like um you know the child man you know you have uh, people who are actually managing the kids but it doesn't matter because you are still everybody kind of looks to you and they know that you're the one and so you have to have a relationship with all of the talent on set so if you don't know kids like you should probably do your research about exactly what like the age of the kids are that you're you that you're working with and do all your research and try to figure out all of the um you know and, and like seriously i do go into shoots with like jokes and little like you know, strategies, yeah, for loosening people up. And, and um, you know, the hardest thing is is getting kids to not pose and try to be natural. So uh, you've got to have strategies. But. I mean, I'm really big with music. I think that you, yes. know, you yes. possibly can play music and think about what you're going to play ahead of time. Um, and it's the more famous your person is you're shooting, um, the harder it is. Uh, about a long time ago 15 years ago i had to shoot james brown and it was back when it, we had it was all cds so there's no we didn't have mp3 players back then so i had to think about okay what do you play for james brown when he walked in the room so uh because you can't play his music because then you look like a like a dummy so <laughs> ended up picking uh john coltrane just playing some some like the greatest jazz that was ever created and, and it he really loved it he Kind of danced his way in the room and <sighs> putting my hand ever since. Pressure. <laughs> and, wow. and Gary, you're working with a lot of um, uh, athletes and runners. Is there something that you need to prepare for when they're um, sweating too much or not enough or like uh, tips yeah, on that? For sure. Um, yeah, sweat control. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I, the, you know, the, 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 Clients want authenticity. They they want to see the the people really running, and and you know, it's hard to to take thousands of frames a day and and not break a sweat. So these, you know, I do have um, usually have to have a stylist or you know makeup artist on set, and you know, dabbing people down and and um, making sure that the you know the, if the shirts get sweaty, then they have another version to they can throw in a different one or whatever. But um, yeah, for sure. That's a thing. Um, it's, uh, it, 
it, it's a, there's a fine line because you do want in some cases i have a client like that i'm working with right now in fact who's his his tagline to their product is you sweat it out we get it out and it's a, it's it's going to launch soon it's a uh, it's a specialized detergent for athletic clothing and so they actually do want to see sweat in the in the ads and they do want it on the clothes so that it shows you know the, the way that the um, the product will work on, on that stuff so yeah it just depends on on what the client says um i know like uh asics when i worked with them their big thing was they really wanted this the perfect touchdown and when you're when you're talking talking about running form is a big thing um you know if, if somebody is landing too much on the on the heel of their foot when they run if they that's that's kind of considered bad form in, in the running world they want sort of a, a rolling nice flat touch of the, of the shoe and they love to see the strike right before everything goes to hell <laughs> because when when the, and you just, i have thousands of frames of, of models with their cheeks like they're hitting the ground and their shirts are like everything's just like because you're you, you've got a lot of impact happening you know so it's impossible for your your face and and body to not show that so it's you have to grab that spot right before the foot actually is putting you know your full weight onto it and so that's a hard hard thing to, to get and you really just you're just timing in your head and watching their their feet hit the ground and you know just you kind of click the button along with that with that pace and uh you know that, that's when you can you can get a few decent frames but um there's running and and uh, dancing to dancers are the same way you know it's to get them at the apex of their move so that everything's lifted and, and floating versus you know they're not pull, being pulled down or their clothes aren't being pushed up or whatever so it's a lot of timing and you're really kind of like experiencing the sport or the or the dance through the lens you have to kind of put yourself there and think here's where i'm going to be right now and you can get those those shots when, and but it takes it takes a bit of practice and failure <laughs> for sure and and mark you're dealing with uh, not only the celebrities that are in front of you but when you're on a set you have the director who probably um doesn't really want you there <laughs> so how does how does that relationship work well it's um it's it really depends on the show uh, and the team um pre-covid uh for episodic television there was a lot of times where the still photographer was only invited on set maybe one or two days per episode so out of every 10 or 12 days you'd only be there one or two mm -hmm. and at that, with that amount of exposure to the cast in the in the camera team it's really hard to kind of gel with them as a team Mm -hmm. But since COVID, uh, they've been wrapping us up and embedding us in the in the shows. And I'm hoping it's something that will linger past COVID. Um, so the current show, the last two shows I've been on, I've been on this one since uh, uh, February. I'm there every day. And so now I have uh, this great rapport with with the camera team and the dolly grips that are moving the dollies around and the boom operators so that I can kind of find a space to do my work without uh, getting run over or, <laughs> you know, screwing up the show. Uh, and now the, and the cast uh, responds well to me because they know who I am and they trust me. Uh, yeah. So it's been hard. I mean, the, you kind of don't have to worry as much about the director because they have so much other things to worry about. As long as you're doing your job, they'll leave you alone. Um, and same with the producers. Uh, you only hear from the producers if you've really made a mistake. And that's usually your last day on set. Oh, jeez. So that doesn't happen very often, hopefully. No. no. Um, I'm going to let uh, Carolyn Potts wants to ask a question. So I'm going to allow her to speak here. Carolyn. Let's see. Ask to unmute. Can you want to oh, unmute? There. I no, that that must have been an accident. I'm so sorry. I must have hit the wrong thing. Hey, I'm All just right. listening in. I'll I'll uh, I'll uh, put you back. <laughs> okay. Wonderful talk. Bye. <laughs> um, there we go. 
All right. So I don't know if anybody from the audience has a question. Otherwise, I'm going to ask you um, right now, uh, is there anything promotional wise that you wish you had started to promote yourself sooner in a certain way or um, not in a certain way because it actually didn't help you? I can answer that question. I wish that I had known sooner to promote the work that I love for myself and not try to promote work that I think the industry wants. Like it's so clear when you see work that really comes from the heart. And I wish that I just had, had, had trusted my instincts sooner and always just put out work that I wanted to get hired for and not work that I thought somebody wanted to look at. I just wish I did more. I mean, my, honestly, I just don't see, it's never seems to be the thing that's on the top of my mind and until I really need it. So you need to promote yourself when you're busy so that you don't become not busy. Definitely. Which is hard. How do you, you're busy. So now this is when you need to be prom promoting, but you're busy. So how do you get time to promote? Yeah, and I'll definitely second what Brooke said. Um, share share the work that you're you're passionate about your 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 personal projects. Uh, you know the passion, the the uh, just everything that you're putting into that shows. And um, and and I've shared projects that I thought had nothing to do with some of the clients that I've that I have or have had. And they've come back and, and commented and like, I love this new stuff you're doing. It's really interesting. And and it's that's really what we're there to be, right? Is to, to show interesting, interesting work that that um, that's different. And if you're trying to show the stuff that you want to get all the time and it's not that different or not that engaging, then there's not really any reason to to show that. So you know per, personal projects are life. And yeah, that's like that, that's what that's where we're here to do. That's what keeps our art going is uh, is engaging our, the stuff that we love. So share that. And is there a connection that you think you could have made sooner that would have helped get you to the next level faster? Is there is there something you could have done that could have speeded up the process of getting work? I think the 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 jobs that I've gotten that, that have have been um, longstanding or, or you know, repetitive re repeat clients um, or work that that I enjoy um, came from those personal projects and sharing them. And I, I wish that I'd known how important it was to share them um, earlier, just because, I, you know, it, it, like what Rick was saying, and how how you try to show the work that you that you think you're, you're, you want to do, or you think that your clients are going to, to um, recognize. But um, I did some work that I, I thought was really fun and interesting, and it was it was involving um, the craft beer uh, scene in San Diego, which was a, just a weird thing here that craft beer became like San Diego became the biggest craft beer maker in America. Um, I thought that was weird. So I because when I first moved to San Diego many years ago there was no beer scene at all and i came from seattle and i was kind of a beer snob up there whenever but i came down to san diego and i'm like what's going on with the beer thing and then fast forward 20 years later san diego is taking like the, all the beer awards and they have the most uh, breweries per capita in the u.s and so i i wanted to explore that so i went and i just started asking these these brewmasters if i could do portraits of them and um uh, Kind of did quick little interviews and so it was a little bit photo photojournalistic that i i'd never really done that but um i i amassed a, a nice little portfolio um, and stories little interview background stories and i put it into a blog and um a couple of magazines picked up on it and now they continually hire me to do that kind of work here in san diego so um and it's fun work because it's it's editorial, which is always kind of fun because you get to you know choose your own path a lot of times based on on the art direction. But then you know there's the uh, the aspect that you're shooting brewers or coffee uh, roasters or you know a lot of these things overlap. So there's 
chefs and, and brewmasters and coffee roasters and, and winemakers, they, they're pretty happy. <laughs> they're a happy group. And they love to talk about what good they people do. to know in your community too. Absolutely, yeah. No, I, I now I I know a lot of the brewers around town, and it's it's always nice to pop into one of the the tasting rooms and get a free round. So, <laughs> I, I I think that one of the things that I learned and that I wish that I had been more intentional about is the collaboration, and it, it goes back to my thing about crew and the team and the people that. Um, are so good to have on set and it's really fun to collaborate and if you're interested in you know uh working on bigger productions then you always are going to need a team and so you want to find who your like people are you know who the people have the same style and the same sensibility and then everybody wins and so i've had a lot of fun doing tests with um people that have become my really close friends too like my social life is really connected now to the people that i um, you know, relate to artistically. So um, the collaborative um, uh, idea is something that I kind of, it just, it happened naturally, but it's something that I cannot underestimate enough. I mean, I can't, I cannot overestimate enough how important that is. And how much um, social media, how much time do each of you spend on social media? And do you think that that's an area that you wish you had spent more time on? Well, I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm not a real advocate of, of spending a lot of time on social media. Um, I mean, I think that it has its place. Um, and I think that a lot of times people get lost into it and they, they forget what real life is all about. That being said, um, I, I think that it is something that it can be a very useful tool to promote yourself on. Um, do I do it enough? Absolutely not. Um, I mean, I, I, I should do a lot better job at it. Um, um, and I, and I, I, I see a lot of really great photography coming over Instagram, you know, every single day of people who I just really, really admire. So uh, I would, I think it's that between Instagram and, and LinkedIn, I think those are the two places where you can really, really find new clients and really connect to the marketplace in a way that's much more dynamic than email marketing and, and direct mail marketing. That's it. Yeah, I, I, I kind of reflect that also that I, I don't really spend a lot of time thinking too hard about what my Instagram is going to look like. And it, I kind of bounce back and forth from loving it and hating it <laughs> you know? if i have fun projects that i'm working on and and um and and it's fun to share you know i, I like the the stories and behind the scenes stuff but um you know when you're when you're, either when you're super busy or super not busy <laughs> those are the times when i'm kind of not on instagram and um it I mean, but i should be i should be a little more consistent i guess is, is what i'm thinking I would have to say that I think you just have to keep it honest, you know, like, I mean, we, we can't, I mean, in, if you are professional in what you're doing, unless you are just so fabulously successful and you really don't need any kind of, you know, exposure, then feel free to not be out there on social media. But I do think that there, it, it, I think what these guys just said is it's it's like you're always like, oh, I should, I should, but also you just want to keep it honest. There's you, again, you can always tell when it's, forced or if you're you know if it feels like i don't know self-promotion in a in a in an unnatural way but if you wanted to share share it's fun. <laughs> it's back to authentic. Something cool. yeah yeah authentic i think i think that's kind of the thing. i'm much happier when i'm not thinking about is this an instagramable moment you know yeah. i'd rather not think that but so, so you know, it's nice to be yeah, it's nice to be present, but again, like I know you're asking us. I I don't know. Like I feel like you should ask somebody who's like has like a million followers or something. Like I don't know. I just I I, I try. I use it. I enjoy it. I like being on Instagram. Um, you know, Mark was saying like there's such great stuff out there. I get inspired. I love I love the um I love the dialogue. But right, but I, I think it's interesting that you're all working photographers without it being a dedicated part of what you do you you're all doing it somewhat but it's not you're not living by it and you're all working so well, my big problem is that i'm under an nda <laughs> and like 
I work 50 yeah. hours a week on this one thing right. for four months. So, and nobody people, gets to see it while it's happening. Oh, no, it's always like, hey, oh, your Instagram would be so fun if we could. If, well, if we could. My dog. Okay. Dog <laughs> in the pond. That, you know, we've got a puppy and he now likes to get in the pond in the backyard and that's what's on the Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you'd think you'd want to put up Ben Affleck, but no, you've got dog in the pond. So. <laughs> oh, and I can see it. There, we've got dog here. And that is a good point, Mark, because a lot of the stuff, you know, when we, when I'm, I'm shooting things that I really want to share, it's, you know, it's on an embargo and I can't share it for six months or, or whatever, or until publication or whatever. And then I kind of forget and I'm off on something else because it's, you know, it's months later and it's not that you know, well, top of mind anymore. I'll make a deal to the 24 people that are on this video chat right now that <laughs> If you follow Mark Hill at Mark uh, Photo Mark sixteen, I will violate my NDA tomorrow when I'm on set. How's that? What? Oh, wow! Um, that's so eight fun, more followers, yeah. man. That's worth it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love it. Um, I love it. I mean, so I, I really think that the whole thing about social media. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say the whole thing about social media. It just this whole like should should should. I think we all have this feeling of responsibility, mm -hmm. but. I think it should just be fun. I think we should keep, try to keep it as fun and you know keep it as interesting as possible. So. Yeah. And then, is there anything in a contract that you wish you had sooner started to put into your contracts, or um, any wording that you would have when you're bidding the job? Like, oh, I always ask for this, and I used to not think to ask for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, been, I've been a photographer for a long time and I still don't always understand what to write on my contracts. I'll just throw that right out there. I, I mean, I had a rep for a long time and they took care of all that stuff. And now that I don't have a rep, sometimes I just make up what I think is the best thing. So I depend on the P I depend on the experts. I'm always like deferring to the producer or the rep or my rep, you know, like I I don't I don't I don't spend I don't spend a lot of time worrying about the contracts. I really I, oh. I spend a lot of time on treatments, but not contracts. I feel yeah. like we should be doing an APA contract. Uh, yes, with just something. the board members from all every place. <laughs> that would be a start. Um, are there any questions out there from anyone that we should follow? Okay, so. Um, all right, we will uh, wrap this up because there is the symposium, the Palm Springs Photo Festival Symposium. Um, we're going to be posting these on on our YouTube, the American Photographic Artists YouTube channel. We have one from every day this week um, with different photographers giving different uh, updates and points of views. Last night it was specifically about social media. So those who want to learn about that can watch last night's episode when we get that posted. Um, uh anything else that anybody would like to add oh i think we juliet you and i talked about this on another uh forum but um communication like having a ha if you want to make your business just like overnight 50 percent better just become a better communicator with your with your client and your team um and you know, I, I I feel like most people are pretty good at it, but um, I've I've run across some situations where it's it's really um, difficult to communicate, and, and all it is is just um, putting my mind at ease. And when I when I look at it from that direction, I think about it from my point of view. I'm making my client's job easier when I can communicate back to them, answer all the questions, and make sure that they don't hang up the phone or you know, walk away from a meeting that with any more questions or any um uncertainty about about what's what's going to happen and how how we're going to work um, and essentially i want to make my clients life easier i want i want them to to go yeah this guy's got it and not have to worry about um following up on emails if i don't respond quick enough and even if I don't have time to respond thoroughly, 
um, I will let them know that I've received the information and I'm going to get back to them soon, just so that everybody knows, you know, you're, you're, you're talking. So that communication um, before, during and after any job is, is so important to me. And when you're working with, uh, you know, with, with your subcontractors too, but you know, all of your other people, I expect them to, to communicate well with me. Once the job is, you know, in their hands, then, then I, I want to know how well it's going and just updates, quick little updates. That's that makes everybody happy. And it's yeah. I, I think that's, you know, looking at some of the calls that we get where somebody's had an issue and they need help connecting with an attorney, it's usually because there's been miscommunication because the, somebody thought something, but the contract didn't spell it out and, and uh, how to resolve it. So absolutely keep, keep everybody involved with um, conversations. So um, thank you. Uh, thank you for those who are here today. We appreciate it. We hope you'll join APA. If you are an APA member, thank you. We, you're an important part of our community. So, um, you know, reach out if you want to get more involved or if there's anything you want to know more. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.